Scott? Here. Waters? Here. Moore? Here. O'Kane? Chainer? Here. We stand for a moment of silent prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, please. and the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Jennifer, Jennifer McCabe. Yep. So if you plug that in the back one, I think. How are you? I'm a hot mess today, Dan. Are you? There we go, we'll scooch it over a little. That reads, whereas brain injury is a serious public health epidemic affecting at least 13 and a half million Americans, and whereas an estimated two and a half million children and adults in the U.S. sustain a traumatic brain injury (TBI) and another 3.5 million individuals sustain an acquired brain injury (ABI) from non-traumatic causes each year, and currently more than six million children and adults in the U.S. live with lifelong disabilities of as a result of traumatic brain injury. And as many of our soldiers have reported symptoms related to concussion and brain injury, include, including slow thinking, memory loss, sleep disturbance, and tension and concentration deficits and brain injury, which is a leading cause of disability among soldiers returning to their communities. And whereas a concussion is also a serious brain injury that can occur without loss of consciousness and can occur in any sport, and recognition and proper management of concussions when they first occur can help prevent further injury or even death as many as 3.8 million sports and recreation related concussions occur in the United States each year. Now therefore I, Robert E. Scott, Mayor of the City of Sioux City, Iowa, on behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim March, 20, March 2022 as National Brain, Brain Injury Awareness Month in Sioux City, Iowa, and encourage all citizens to help enhance public awareness of traumatic brain injury and salute the mission of the Brain Injury Association of Iowa. I'd like to present this to you and have you say a few words, please. All right, well, thank you. Um, Opportunities Unlimited has been providing services in the Siouxland community for 30 years now. Uh, we were founded by a number of local families who had had children with brain injuries. And as a mission-based organization, we serve approximately 200 individuals each year. We're committed to brain injury and other special needs. We work diligently to provide excellent rehabilitation and residential services in our nine homes, which are all located on the north side of Sioux City. Our newest brain injury program is called Neurobehavioral Rehabilitation Services, or CNRS, and this allows us to further support our continuum of care and provide a much needed service in Iowa. In fact, we're proud that we're one of just five organizations in the entire state to provide this level of care. 38 of our employees have become certified brain injury specialists. This is a pretty prestigious thing in that they have completed coursework and um, passed a national exam. We also have a program called Home and Community-Based Services, which we, which we provide services to individuals with brain injuries in their homes and out in the community. With that, we help with skill development, um, job coaching, and respite care. In an effort to promote awareness and prevention of brain injury, OU has a program called Got a Brain, Get a Helmet. And with this, we've designed our own curriculum, and we have a program that we reach out to second grade students in all of the Sioux City schools. We follow up with a school assembly, and we award uh, helmets to the students. And with a grant that we've secured from the local Dairy Queen, we've been able to give every second grader a helmet for the last three years, so we're pretty excited about that. Again, our goal is to prevent brain injuries with this program. Um, and Brain Injury Awareness Month, again, we wanna bring awareness and help prevent uh, injuries and anything we can do to help with this uh, silent epidemic. We're proud of the work that our organization provides, and we feel like we make a pretty important impact in the Siouxland community. So thank you for uh, this proclamation today. I want to add something thank you. to that. Yes, I, I want to say you're a very valuable member of the community, and we appreciate all that you've been doing and, and all the hard work that you've uh, been dedicating and being loyal and um, sticking with the program. And we hope there are years to come where you won't have as many brain injuries, but you'll still be carrying on the mission that you're fulfilling. So thank you. Very good, thank you.
Thank yeah, I you. would just echo that. We're really thankful to have you in the community. I mean, I know you're from a, wearing a couple different hats and I think you do a great job up there. And I know the pandemic hasn't been easy, um, especially with staffing shortages and everything. And so we just really appreciate you being a good community partner and offering something that's really instrumental in a lot of families. Super. So thank you. Little, some people don't know, but uh, Mr. Moore had a lot to do with that back in the day of getting that started. It, with the, I remember Stonebergs and Norm Clay, and I know there were a couple other families I'm not thinking about, but they were, they were families that had kids involved, and they did a great job pushing that agenda to get it to happen. So thank you for your heart. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. We can do that for Steve Cammer, Art Center Board of Trustees. That resume you filled out that said I've done it before probably is enough, but come on up and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to jump back on. How you been? Oh, I can't complain. That a boy. Don't do me any good. <laughs> why you want to serve again? Well, I just uh, have been involved with the Art Center and have for back when it was still in the Vadro building, I believe it was. Uh, as a child, I used to go up there and piddle around. Now I'm involved with the new building down here, and I have nothing else to do, I guess, <laughs> since I am presently not employed anywhere or doing anything of consequence. I've operated Whiskey Creek Pottery for the last several years, and have been involved in the commercial aspects of art and arts uh, in the area, uh, throughout the whole area anyway. I'm basically a potter at heart and a piddler, so I just uh, play in the mud. Now I can be uh, of some value, and I've been with the Art Center for quite some time. In fact, I am presently teaching pottery classes now uh, evening adult classes and have been involved with the board for some time and uh, see if I can be of any value and any help with the board of trustees. Well, thank you. Questions? Thank you for applying. Thank you for yeah. Past service All right. as well. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate right. it. Okay, we'll go to the consent agenda items 3 through 13C, consider them to pass unanimously. Uh, if you want to speak on an item, please come up as I read. If you want to speak on an item not on the agenda, please come up under citizen concerns. Remember, when you come to the mic, state your name and address for the record. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. Three is a reading of the City Council minutes of March 7, 2022. Four is a resolution assessing a $500, $500 civil penalty against Bronger State Company for violation of the beer, wine, and liquor laws. Five is a resolution amending position classification manual by approving an updated job description for the position of the customer service specialist. Six is a resolution proposing to sell a portion of vacated North South Alley at 1133 West First Street and 103 South Center Street to petitioners Los Altos Rentals. Seven is their actions relating to grants. A is a resolution authorizing the police department to apply for a grant funding for the tri-state Drug Task Force. Eight is a resolution authorizing the Neighborhood Services Manager to submit a MERD Spring Grant application to fund a mural at West 7th Street, on West 7th Street. Eight is an adopting construction documents. Uh, a is a resolution adopting plans and spec for the annual sidewalk program. B is a resolution adopting plans and specs for the fiber optic project. C is a resolution adopting plans and specs for the 38th Street booster station improvements. Nine are actions relating to agreements and contracts. A is a resolution approving a contract for Barclay Asphalt for the 18th Street Mill and Overlay Project. B is a resolution awarding a service provider agreement to Interstate Mechanical to replace a Lewis pool, pool pump and motor. I need to abstain on that item, please. C is a resolution approving a consulting services agreement with JEO Consulting for the Headington Park Splash Pad Project. I, I forgot to ask you on this, Matt. What side of the park are the, is this going to be located on? Matt Salvas, Ward Parks and Recreation Director. I have an exhibit. Sorry, I didn't bring it today. Um, it's going to be near behind the, the backstop area, just one of the open space. We want to keep the, 
the field intact. So uh, I can send you an exhibit. On the south side then. Yeah, I can send you an exhibit so, okay. you, so you're aware. All right, thank you. Yep. I need to abstain for, for personal reasons. D is a resolution approving a contract to Mark Albanicious for the Highway 75 water main replacement connection project. Ten are actions authorizing payments. A is a resolution authorizing payment to Nelson Commercial Construction for the airport maintenance garage fuel tank project. B is a resolution authorizing payment to Sioux City Engineering for the Siouxland Expo Center parking lot expansion. C is a resolution approving fund transfers for the fiscal year 2023 budget. 11 or purchasing. A is a resolution awarding, awarding a purchase order to combined building specialties for stadium chairs in the Lewis and Clark Stadium. B is a resolution awarding a purchase order to DPC Industries for sodium hypo, hypochlorite solution for the water treatment plant. Back on A, will these be in in time for the season? Likely no. It would probably be after the season based on current lead times. We'll try our best, but it's going to probably be after the season. After the season? Yeah. And are you planning on doing this again next year? Uh, if, there, if the council wants to proceed with it, we would. Otherwise, uh, the, the chairs that we're replacing, the parts would be available to fix the other ones. Okay. We're keeping all the old chairs. No, I was just wondering if we had a second year of the CIP. It was meant to be phased, but there's nothing in the CIP right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. C is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Nevaplast USA for the summer tubing equipment at Cone Park. D is a resolution awarding a service provider agreement to Shenandoah Groundworks for installation at the Cone Park summer tubing equipment. E is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Hanover Displays for automated voice enunciator equipment for 13 buses. F is a resolution awarding a service provider agreement to hand over displays for the on-site training inspection of automated voice and enunciator equipment. Mayor. Yes. Uh, Matt, back, I'm sorry, back on the um, summer tubing equipment for Cone Park. Well, that, that's gonna be ordered shortly. Then if we do approve this tonight. <clears throat> PO would be issued this week. I'm PO would be issued this week, yes. And then we'd hope that we hope to be up and running by the second week of June. Second week in June, you'll be Correct. operating. Yep. Staff okay. is doing the majority of the installation. Did I? No, the Shenandoah Groundworks is doing the installation, but we will be observing, so we can do it ourselves in the future. Oh, I just read that. The, okay, I read it the other. We way. could just yeah. have John do it all. Okay. We're <laughs> the <laughs> plan is to do it, it in house in the future. Then you'll tear it down. So they bring it tear up it down and reinstall annually. Okay. And repairs are going to be few. Yeah, I wouldn't, I mean, it's, go ahead, what, John. What do you think, seriously, about the maintenance on the equipment? Yeah, John Burns, Recreation Supervisor. We went out to Vail, Colorado, and I asked them that uh, question. They said this has about an 18 to 20 year lifespan, depending on how you treat it, obviously. Uh, um, they did very little in, uh, in improvements over 10 years of their time, so can't, can't imagine there's gonna be a whole bunch. Well, be sure and call me on opening day, will you? I'd like to. We'll have you at the ribbon cutting to go down first. How about that? I'd like to do that. I'm looking forward to it. You went down the winter tubing, right? I, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. I did. And you stopped me at the end. Thank you very much. You're welcome. welcome. <laughs> Thanks for remembering that. Is that yeah, sorry. two lanes or did we squeeze? Two, it is two lanes. We, we did an alternate for a third lane. We just don't have the available budget. Yeah. And you can see how it goes. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. we can. This is something to easily add. You lanes build later. on. Oh yeah. 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 If there's high demand, then build on another lane and yep. go from high demand. Don't you I really anticipate there will be high yeah. demand? I do. I, I do. Well, it's a I fun place. I mean, I think John and the crew down there has done a lot of awesome summer programming. I've went down there quite a few times, so I think they've been very resourceful, putting on different events and getting people down there. And and I th I think this is just going to add to it and complement that. Yep. I could see office parties booking it and. Birthday party. It could be huge for birthday parties. Yeah, yeah we're excited to play council around with the programming. Council on that. party. Council, yeah, party. council retreat. Council retreat. Council retreat. Council retreat. John showed a video at the neighborhood network meeting of, of one of him going down and one of somebody else going down. And he he borrowed the video. So, <laughs> but it was uh, it was really fun to see. It was it was something special. They got everybody in the room talking. Everybody was excited about Good. it. Good. Good. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for yeah. keeping that moving. We're excited. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. You're done now. I'm done now, Mayor. 
I didn't go over three minutes. <laughs> <you know. laughs> Applications for beer and liquor license. See the list come forward if you have any questions. 13, receipt of minutes. See, see the list come forward. Anyone to be heard on any of those items? I think so. Six o'clock. Passes five zero fourteen's res a motion appointing Riot Roseboom to the Environmental Advisory Board to complete the balance of a three year term expiring December thirty first, twenty twenty two, and reappointing Ryan Rosenboom to the Environmental Advisory Board for a three-year term expiring in December 31st, uh, 2025. Is, I'll move that. Is that how we normally do that? You extend it right away? Yes, if we're within a year's time or less than a year, then we'll do it right away. I'll second it. Passes five zero. Fifteen is a motion appointing Christopher Brocklesby to the Gillian Kosovo Sister City Committee for a three-year term expiring December thirty-first, two thousand twenty-four. I'll move that. Second. Passes 5016 is an ordinance adopting a site plan for 1600 and 1620 Pacific Street. The petitioner's Bacon Creek design. PNZ recommends approval with conditions. First consideration approved March 7, 2022. I'll move second reading. Jeff Hansen, Community Development second. Operations Manager. As part of the deferral, or excuse me, as part of the first reading that was approved last week, the petitioner. Um, who is in the audience to answer any question has provided a rendering as requested for the elevation of the building and so we're all able to show that to you here quickly so this will be the front of the building that faces to the west toward the back of the bimbo building again the address is 1600 and 1620 pacific street uh, as you can see, there's four overhead doors that access into the four individual bays, uh, four walkthrough doors for each bay. Uh, majority of the building is all corrugated metal um, with the decorative uh, stone veneer on the bottom of the building. The three other sides not facing uh, Pacific Street are corrugated metal. This does not show the rendering or the landscaping that has been since been added to the approved site plan as a result of the PNZ action and updated site plan. So on the back of that building there that faces the east towards residential, we do have trees and landscaping. Great. Yeah. Well, then you need to make a motion to help me out, Jeff, because the PNZ was that they had to comply with the basically with the other zoning the PNZ that it would have been yeah the PNZ recommendation again we're working with a GI zone parcel site plan went through PNZ at council direction that's why we're here today to review the PNZ recommendation their recommendation is to have the decorative design materials 60 percent on the front and street facing sides of the building as we would for BP and also restrict all land uses on the site plan to BP land uses versus GI. And so I would ask for Nicole's assistance on what that motion would look like if you decide to either leave those on or have them removed. Because last time we sent it back, or, it was, it was to have those removed, or, or right? Because I was BP. saying stay P and, or BP was my th my no vote was to stay with that so that you would have those uses. But what you're saying is we could say, well, it's GI, but it's limited to the BP. And I believe that was your That's motion last now. week was to only review the, or approve first reading to allow an opportunity to review the elevations. Right. We'd really like it to be GI. Our whole property is GI. Yeah. Zone GI. 
we already approved that, so we want to know, do we want to approve the design as GI as well? And go against what? Well, it, there are a couple different options. The way that it's currently on the agenda right now is just um, adopting the site plan as presented uh, in the GI district or the ZI, GI zone. Um, however, you can incorporate what planning and zoning had recommend, which is what Jeff had stated, the 60% design materials on the front. But that's what they recommended, so that's what the motion is. Uh, yeah, that's what the motion is. The way that it's just stated right now, it is not included in the ordinance. With the we typically bring it forward as the applicant has requested. So you as, would have to, as requested by the applicant or you the... You would have to add in what planning and zoning had recommended. You'd have to move to amend to add those. Well, if that's the case, I don't... That's not what... Okay. That's not what we were told last week, or, we, or we'd have done second and third last week. Right. We, we were told that they gave all that... They made... The, the condition was that they had... He had to meet the B, B whatever, conditions of the building. That was their, that's their recommendation to the city council. Correct. Correct. That's incorporated in the RCA. However, the ordinance comes forward based on the applicant's um, application. So the ordinance as written right now does not. Okay, so. So it yes includes vote. the basic site plan. So yes presented. vote is just, we're happy with this building then is what you're telling us. And Correct. go with straight across GI. Yes, with the site plan that has been presented. Which would, that's shrubbery, that's not building design. We had a few leftover items, they've all been addressed. One was snow storage, one was the landscaping, moving around to the east side of the building, and... Those were reflected in the ordinance. Driveway width, and those have all been resolved. Does that answer your question? It does. I provided one more slide I'd like you guys to see. This building, with the exception of the two checkered areas, was to be all corrugated metal and got denied. This process is flawed. And I know Jeff's, Jeff told me he's working on it, but I mean, we got a lot of buildings coming down the pipeline this summer, and it's important that this has changed because my building was now denied. So my question to you guys is, can I use corrugated metal? I'm at the time right now where I've got the whole exterior of the second sheeted, we're framing third, it's $130,000 extra for me to do decorative metal when, respectfully to you folks, I mean, you guys, it, corrugated metal will look just as fine. But instead, I have to go to decorative metal, which is extremely labor intensive, and it's 5x the cost just in the material. It doesn't make sense. Just some history on this rendering. This is the storage building that's located on Hulahan Hula right? Run, if you're familiar with that. Um, and Paul did make an application to the PNZ Commission to review and um, waive the design standards and the PNZ Commission denied it before the building was started. The process- Because that's where I'm, I'm, I am trying to figure that out too or see where that is because I agree with you, Paul, that because Morningside was doing the greenhouse and they ran into the same situation is that they were looking at what they thought was gonna be a more attractive exterior and it was gonna be cheaper, but it didn't meet the standards. So then they had to go to this other way that they didn't like either. So, but I thought Jason said that when we brought it to PNZ in the past, after they see this, they have been more likely to amend or to kind of be more flexible on those when they understand it's just, they don't wanna go solely to allowing anything because then people don't put the money and time into making it look like a quality product. They have, Is that the concern? They have approved them in uh, BP zoning districts for several buildings. I'm not aware of any that they've approved in general commercial. I don't believe we've received. So what is this first and second floor right now? Well, there's a lot of this that's the glass on the ends, I believe. I'll let you describe the first, it. The first floor in the back uh, is dug into the hill. It's, it's poured concrete walls. The front of it there where it's the white, it looks white, I should say. That's CMU walls. CMU walls go up from that left, from the red all the way around the back to the right is all CMU walls. So then the second floor is all framed and covered up by metal. What's so we, ply, we plywood it, put, a, put an air barrier on it, and then we metal it. What's the white, what is CME walls or? CMU is concrete block walls. Oh, block okay. walls. gotcha. I don't, I, I can't make, I can't make that decision tonight without knowing more about what you're even talking about. And 
Is this what it's going to look like now, or this is what you want it to look like? This is what he wants to look like. Is this what you want to, it to look like? This is what it's going to look like. That what I'm trying to get across is that, like, to you folks, you probably don't even know if it's corrugated metal or not. Like, right now, I, I can make corrugated metal be that color, or I can make architectural metal be that color, okay? Right. It, they, 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 the, the, the suppliers have it in both products, okay? It's just what is approved based on how it's fabricated. That's it. And that's what I'm saying. Nobody would know the difference, and I'm going to use all kinds of different colors. The, the colors are all going to be the same, whether you guys allow me to do corrugated metal or not. And that's what I'm trying to get across is to, to most people, they don't, they, since this does, isn't technically a Morton building, a machine shed, they don't understand that. And that's what I'm trying to get across is it's right. so flawed. Well, were these codes written before we had such awesome decorative colors and textures and all of this? I mean, do we need to revisit? I, th I think it does need to be revisited in certain right. areas, you know, based on council direction and that items have been brought forward. In this particular case, there is a process to appeal it. Uh, as I mentioned, P&Z denied the initial request here at this property on Houlihan. Um, it was not appealed to that time at council, but that would ultimately be the next step was to be appeal that to this, to this body. Well, and that's my, <clears throat> that's where I'm coming from is I would much rather have P&Z and your design standards and team kind of analyze and revisit that and say what is the nuanced way that people are making buildings and what is acceptable and what isn't. Because I think to Jason's point last week and I think probably to city staff's point is I certainly don't want it to always come back to us and us make the decision because then it pits us against P&Z. It's like there's a process that's there rather than contractors feeling like, well, I'm not happy with city staff, I guess I'm just gonna go to council. Like, I, I think that's a horrible way to conduct business and not something that I wanna do. Right. Nor that, do we wanna make it difficult for the developers as well by having such stringent guidelines that they have to follow when there's new design elements out there that they could be utilizing. <clears throat> well, I do. I do have to say this, Jeff, and I'm not a big fan of your deals, you know, for all the money we spent and we have the, still have these same issues, but I thought we were just trying to not have a tan Morton style building all over town. Yes. I think that was the purpose. When you change the color and do all that kind of stuff, I really don't, you can't tell me that there's a difference in that metal. I mean, you, other than the way the slats run, it's hard for me to, uh, it, it's just hard for me to understand why we, we're, we're so rigid on that. I, I, I mean, I think that's great that you got these different colors and all that sort of stuff. I think that's kind of a neat looking building that, uh, I mean, now it seems like everybody is, goes with that gray, white, and black. I don't mean to step on your toes. <laughs> I got well, right they here. did it at the He's Expo Center. He's trying to break that right here. They did it at the Expo Center. They do it. They're doing that same thing, that same look, but it looks a lot better than a plain building. Right. So I don't know. But I guess for perspective is what is allowed, which is sick to me, is that I could take lap siding, just siding, and lap it around this entire building, one color, and that's approved. I mean, that's a problem to me. I mean, that's ugly. But this isn't. This wouldn't be approved. If it was corrugated. It just doesn't make sense. And I'm asking for you guys to get involved, just because. I mean, I know you had mentioned that maybe P and Z works with city staff on it, you know, and figures it out. But I, I think you guys got to get involved and 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 work with them to get a firm understanding, because. I mean, every building we've done has been denied, because of the design standards, and I don't see that improving until a different code verbiage process is set up. I think that's very true. At least at least allow for a little bit of fluidity in how it's interpreted because you started this process in January. We're in March. That's a lot of time. And the original request was regarding the zoning, right? Because you have another property that and you wanted the zoning to match. Yeah. That that was the very the very first request that started this. It seems like a lot to go through to want to put money into our town. We have approved corrugated metal on other buildings, it just has not been approved on the front of the building. So we've done the decorative, decorative down in the business parks 
uh, we've allowed corrugated on non-street facing or non-parking side, so they have approved that. Corrugated Good. has been approved. I know Bob Bastler would be rolling over in his grave when I say that, but some metal is a lot better looking than a cold block wall. But the cold block wall meets the criteria. That doesn't make sense to me. Either way, without it's, painting it, at least. Yeah, but either way, it's going to take a, a an amendment in the ordinance, isn't it? So we just need to start that process and take because a review. I would elaborate. I think there's some confusion that corrugated metal is not allowed. It is allowed by the code. It's a limited material, which would require planning and zoning commission approval in the general commercial and business park zones. So yes. it isn't that it isn't allowed, it's that it has to have P and Z approval. And, and, that's anyway. why, and that's why I was confused because I thought Jason said in the last, if those renderings or if that would have came to us, we would have approved it. Planning and zoning was just saying, we wanted a BP because say Paul and Ben sell it, How many anyone else can go in, anyone else can go in and do anything general industrial. How many have they approved? I don't know. This, this building we can get that information for you. Because they did, they wouldn't approve this one because exactly. they kind of knew what he was going to do. So they, they, they would not approve this one because they sent it back saying you had to do it, like the BC or whatever. That's what they said. Oh, on Pacific Street. Now we're yeah. talking. Yeah. Yeah. So. So that that's not the case. I don't know. This could have been appealed to the council. Question. Could have been appealed to the council. I. That's what somebody just said. Is it too late to appeal it to the council? I guess you can appeal it to the council. I think it's been over a year. Back. I'm not sure. It's been over a year. This was a long time ago, this project. We'd have to it's, look to see if uh, they'd have it's to resubmit. Under a year. And construction How long started they have in appeal? July. I'm not sure if there's a time frame on these appeals. We'd have to go back and look. Okay. Well, we can't solve that problem tonight, but we can vote on this one. But Thank can you. we check on the appeal to make sure there's yes. not a time frame so Paul yeah. can come back and ask? Yeah, that once yep. we vote. Thanks, Paul. Hey, to be clear, so on our vote, we are we are adopting the site plan that Paul has submitted. Is that what? And you're leaving it GI and not taking PNC yeah, hang, recommendation. Hang on just a minute. I want to make sure we're clear on this. That's how the ordinance is written, so I would say yes. So the site plan that was submitted that you show on the screen we're approving, we're voting to approve it or not to approve it. Correct. Yes or no? That is, that is well, yes is to approve the site plan and that we can, and to leave it you can move on with your project and we're good to go. Correct. What had been presented or voted upon by planning and zoning also included a couple other conditions, but those are not part of the main motion that's on the floor right now. You would have to add those restrictions in if you chose to follow They've already been planning and zoning recommended because there was a, a restricted land use portion of that and then the decorative 60% material on the front side of the building. Those are not included on what's been moved but, for right now. The building elevations are in front of you. Even This is what was presented, but this would not be required under general industrial either because there's no design standards required in general industrial. So if you want to make it part of your motion that this is what is designed, you could do that as well. Well, I, I, I don't care we do that but if a developer brings a picture here and it doesn't look like that when we get done I hope he doesn't come back with a with a plan in the future because it might be a surprise I, I mean if you show me a good faith effort that this is what you're gonna do I hope you would honor that so you're, you're saying we're not adopting this I, I'm sorry Chris I didn't follow you I need to not have I. elevations when they reviewed it so this was provided uh, late last week this is what the petitioner has provided that they intend to do, but the code does not require that this design be met. But I thought the motion was adopting a site plan. That's the truth. That's all that. The only thing in the ordinance right now is just this. You'd like to make a motion that says the site plan includes this elevation. Well, he went to the work to provide it for us within. Yeah, No, but you went to the work to provide this to the mayor and the council. So, I, isn't this what we want to say? Put our stamp of approval on, Paul. Yeah. I'll make an amendment then. Oh, okay, that's what we're, that's what we'll do. So, I'll, I'll move to amend the main motion to include the site plan that's been presented to the council. Because you, don't, I don't have a number on it or anything. So, it's the one that was presented that you presented that you'd worked on. 
And you did a nice job on it, too, by the way. So I need a second. <laughs> second. I'm well, not sure what this is including, though. What are you including with this? Just the actual site plan itself. The rendering. The rendering. What the most recent. The elevations on the site plan. The design. Okay. The specific one. So gotcha. it's kind of the hybrid. Aye. Waters. Moore. Aye. O'Kane. Aye. Shaner. Aye. Scott. Aye. Now on the Main second reading. If this passes, the only reason why we can't do the third. Passes 5-0. Anybody opposed to waiving the statutory rule? No. No. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Second and third, or third. Second. This is five zero. So on seventeen, you've seen a motion to defer. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, staff would request deferral of item seventeen and eighteen for one additional week. Uh, we've continued our negotiations, discussions with the developer and property owner Sam Moose. Uh, we'd like another week to continue that discussion. And Sam's in the audience. If you have any questions, you okay with that, Sam? Okay, I'll move that Second. deferral on seventeen and eighteen. Second. More. Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Nine, uh, hearing 19 is a hearing and resolution approving plans and specs for the Highway 75 water main replacement. Move that. Second. Hearing. Mayor, did you combine 17 and 18 into one deferral? Yes. Hearing's now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5020 is a hearing and resolution approving plans and specs for the West Kings Highway Bridge replacement. I'll move that. Second. The hearing is now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5 0 is a hearing and resolution approving construction documents for the Dace Avenue Bridge reconstruction. I'll move that. Second. Hearing is now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5 0 is a hearing and resolution accepting the proposal of Heinhold hog markets for land in the combined Floyd River Urban Renewal Area, authorizing a sale. The property is the vacated North South Alley at 624 Cunningham Drive. I'll move that. Second. Public hearing is now open. Jeff, I, I know that we're going to have an expansion of that feed energy as a result of this. Critically important to me that we really watch what we allow there because we've allowed things to happen down in that stockyards area that probably shouldn't have happened over the years. So, like maybe paved driveways rather than dirt roads through the site, things like that. Yep. Any improvements to this site made uh, in part by the energy are um, all new whether it's paving, parking lot, um, gravel into paving. Well, I'm not sure that's the because case because they, they, used, they used blew that paint. plan up pretty much and we they've rebuilt it all and we haven't seen any of the other improvements that you would have asked 
me to make. They haven't paved anything down there. They haven't done anything else like that. They've had, I believe, two additions go through DRC, Chris. They had uh, one that they didn't build, and then one tank expansion on the backside, I think, since the fire that have come through DRC and have met all the requirements. Well, they put a boiler on the front side that I don't think probably met the decorative metal that you would expect it to have met. Not sure about that one. I know our economic development staff has met with them for the last couple of years on expansions, um, also looking at potentially relocation to a new facility. And so I know they have connections with them and we'll continue those discussions to see what improvements they plan. Okay, well, I just wanna make sure that we're once there's a renovation to a plant, they've got to bring stuff up to standards, right? Yep. Okay. Marty, do you have anything to add to that with your talks? So, uh, just Thank you. Correct. We have talked to, uh, to them on a number of occasions after they had the fire. They did look at moving completely, um, but it seems as though they've decided to rebuild the site for the most part. Um, I haven't talked to them recently, <clears throat> but... Um, um, we can certainly check into that and make sure that they follow in the codes. Uh, I know they, they plan some expansion related to the acquisition of the Heinhold land. Right. I just and, want to make sure. And they should have to comply with. roads going through there, not dirt roads, things like that. The, the alley between them and, and the yeah. siding place is still dirt, and I think this, that's part of this. I, I feel like most of their current site is paved already, but, I mean, just because well, didn't the they parking. buy that alley? <laughs> Didn't they buy That's the alley? That's this piece here. That's what this is. Yeah. No, that, okay. This was right. the hearing. The first one was. I thought this alley was running north-south rather than east. It, this is north-south. Right. But there's an east-west alley talking about on the, the east north west. side of their property. I thought they bought a while back. That's not part of the. I know, but they continue to use that without paving it. That's, they, okay. that's my point. And they'll use it more now with this acquisition because it feeds right into that site. That's all. I think that's a street. I think it's Chicago Avenue. I don't believe that's been vacated. I thought we did a while back. No, because, we did a, because we, I asked the question, will this affect will we, this, uh, will this affect the siding place? And it, I was told it would not. They'd still it. Hmm. We vacated an east-west alley that was lying underneath the Spanko siding building, and we've since vacated and sold that. But that was a east-west alley that was a okay. underneath the uh, center of the building. Okay. Well, just want to make sure that we're we'll get back. Hearing is open, anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5 0. 23 is the resolution for the IBPI Center. We're going to move to delete. I will move that. Second. O'Kane? Okay. Aye. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. 24 is a hearing and resolution approving plans and specifications for the Sioux Airfield Seal Coat Project. I'll move that. Second. Hearing's now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5 0. 25 is a hearing and resolution adopting the annual budget and the capital improvement program. Is this the annual operating and then capital improvement? Because we used to do that in two, but we're doing it in one now. Is that correct? Because I have read it. The annual budget for fiscal year and then. Sarah Swearingen, budget manager. Yes, this includes the FY23 operating budget and the FY23 capital improvement. What if you want to vote for one and not the other? I'm going to move to separate them and I'm going to move the capital improvement program first. Second. Hearings now open on the capital improvement budget. Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Oh, you got to call that. I'll call it. Shaner. Aye. Scott. Aye. Water. <clears throat> Aye. Moore. Aye. O'Kane. Aye. Okay, now uh, hearing resolution adopting annual operating budget. 
Somebody else can move that. Oh, I'll move that. Second. Hearing is now open. Anyone to be heard? I just want to make some preliminary comments, if I may, uh, Mayor. Um, first of all, I want to state that this was probably one of the most difficult budget hearing years I've been involved in, um, primarily uh, not for lack of good discussion, um, but because of uh, so many factors that we were forced to accept um, that we didn't have control over as a council for our decision making. And I have made those comments earlier when we started the budget process and they still hold true. Um, I don't want to sacrifice good service or excellent service from City Hall uh, in operations for uh, just trying to keep the levy where it has been. Um, it's still going to be uh, a levy, proposed levy is still going to be uh, as good, if not better, than what most previous years have been, even with those automatic increases. I also want to compliment Matthew O'Kane on his first budget hearing process. Um, Matthew participated and gave a lot of good input. Um, he opened my eyes to a couple of uh, issues that I appreciated your input on, and so I, I appreciated that you just you just jumped right in and, and joined Julie and, and Alex and the mayor um, for that discussion. Um, lastly, I want to state um, I spoke of excellent customer service, and there have been departments that asked for uh, changing or, or funding for full-time employees instead of the uh, instead of the part-time employees that they've been having uh, budgeted for. And in light of that, because that was a difficult decision for me to make, um, part-time employees versus full-time employees, and what will, we, what will the taxpayer get? What will the citizens of Sioux City receive for those services? So I'm asking and directing uh, the departments that have received, if this budget it passes um, that have received full-time employees in their departments, um, such as the Human Rights Department, the Inspections Department, and HR. Uh, there might be some other departments that I've missed that have gone from part-time to full-time, but those are the three that come to mind. I would ask, starting July 1, um, that we get quarterly reports of the increased product productivity in those departments as a result of the change of staff from part-time to full-time. Uh, I don't doubt, I don't have a doubt in my mind that the department directors uh, only seek full-time employees and improvements in their, in their department's budget in good faith. And so I'm not questioning that, but I need to have some uh, evidence to show that the productivity has increased over time because that would certainly um, call for a review a year from now when we're reviewing the operating budget. I don't think I need to make that in the form of a motion. I think <clears> I <throat> have the prerogative to request that from the department directors, but city attorney, if I, if I stand corrected or not, please correct me because I wanna make sure I, I get those reports quarterly. Okay. And I apologize, I was checking to make sure that our hearing that we noticed for both combined that we're able to separate out it looks like the hearing notice was published with everything together for the operating and the capital improvements. So I apologize. I'm stepping back a second to make sure that that was okay. Um, it's a combined resolution before the council. We can attempt to separate it out. Allers may have something different to say about that. So I just wanted to let the council know that. Um, well, if you want me to withdraw my motion on the first one and it, vote, vote it as one, we can do that. For it, just to make sure that we don't have to come back and do that, because um, it was a combined hearing notice that was published. I'll withdraw my motion. I'll withdraw my second. And I apologize, Councilman Moore, I, if you could restate your question. I, I think I can answer that. Dan, you can direct me and department heads to provide the council with quarterly reports. I don't okay. think that needs to be an amended, an okay. amendment to the resolution. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Padmore. I'll look to you then to accomplish that for me, but I also want it to go to the entire council and the mayor. Yes. Okay, because I do want to see the, that productivity has increased and we're doing better um, because I still strive for excellent customer service from City Hall. 
in the last two years have been trying, very trying to say the least with the circumstances that we've had. Those are my comments and I appreciate Mayor that you've given me the time to make those, thank you. And I would just have a few things to say as well. I, I, before we vote on this, I think that these are difficult times for a lot of people in our community. I think that with rising inflation, especially gas prices with the situation over um, in, in the Ukraine, I think there are a lot of factors working against us right now um, that make this vote very difficult as, as Councilman Moore mentioned. I think this was an extraordinarily difficult um, budget cycle where we weren't able to um, keep the taxes level. I think you have a council that has worked and, and a staff that has worked above and beyond to make sure um, that we are keeping those taxes low. And, and I think that at least in my tenure here, we've done a good job of doing that. I think that in my opinion, these improvements, these additions that we have made are essential to keep our community moving forward and to Councilman Moore's point to provide excellent customer service, things that are needed in our police department, things that are needed to avoid turnover and expanding. Um, I think these are things that are essential, but I, it is not lost on me that we are proposing this increase at a very difficult time. Um, the one point that I would want to make of, of my frustrations really stem from the fact that a lot of this increase were out of our hands. I think that that's gonna go unnoticed largely by the people of Sioux City. I hope um, and think that it has been reported in the past, but the decisions that are made in Des Moines are having a direct effect on the people in Sioux City. And I want the people of Sioux City to know that if this budget is passed, more than two thirds of this increase is a direct result of the action that was taken by the majority party in, in the legislature down in Des Moines and signed off by the governor. Our previous governor has said that he would, have, he would have vetoed this at any point it crossed his desk and the current governor did no such thing. So if you're looking for someone to blame for this increase, remember that over two thirds of this increase are because of those decisions that were made in Des Moines. And that's hard because I think the remaining increase was something that was needed, as I said before, was essential, but I understand also that this is a time when people are struggling to get groceries and fill their gas tank. And with that, I mean, I think we are asked to make difficult decisions, and I think that we, we did that to the best of our ability. And pay their rent. Well, I'm gonna be the only no vote, so I'll just tell you why. It is tough for me to vote. I've, I've done 22 of these, Alex, and you said to me, well, are you gonna vote no? And I've done 22 of these. I think if you check, I've only voted twice not for a budget. So my record, I think, speaks pretty highly of going along with the council. But, and I understand where you're coming from. I understand service, I understand all that. But these are times with gas prices, no ceiling in sight that affect people that, that are most impacted by that, that they have to drive to work in the morning. They have to be able to pay their property taxes. And will we sacrifice some customer service by not passing this budget? Probably we are going to, yes. But the citizens have to have a balance here too. They have to understand we can't do everything with the constraints that the state has placed on us. And it's unacceptable. It's going to get worse when the state, in their infinite wisdom, takes away your sales tax dollars and t makes it a state one cent tax, like they're proposing, because it never comes home once they get once they get involved in that process. So if the people really want to complain to the legislature, start complaining now, because once the state takes that one cent, and they then give it back to us, which never happens, will never happen. Mark my word, year five of that happening, they'll begin to erode what the local governments are entitled to. And if you think you've got a problem balancing a budget by losing $800,000 a year in property taxes on apartments, wait till you gotta pick up 17 million in sales taxes that won't come back to you. Because they'll, they'll start fund, which I'm for, they'll start funding water quality projects and all those sort of things, but they'll do it on the backs of the taxpayers at the local level. So. This job's not gonna get easier, it's only gonna get harder, unfortunately. And I, I, I'm not terribly opposed to any of the things you guys propose. I'm just opposed to them right now because I, I just 
don't think we realize the impact of gas prices, food prices. You know, I own a, I own a, a store that sells durable medical to handicap people. We can't get product in, and if we do, the price is so high that the people can't afford it right now. That's what, that's what people in lower incomes are looking at. So it's just tough for me to vote for that when I know what's out in front of us for right now. The uncertainty is just too much right now. Your are you going comments. to light this up or are you going to call the roll? Well, just, Mayor, just your comments. I just want to clarify because I was all for splitting these out as well. And so I think the capital improvements program is one thing, the operating budget that your your comments really are addressing our operating budget, yes. but the votes on both because we've combined them. In yes. the motion. Well, it's impossible to separate them today. Well, we're taking well, some, we're, we're taking a risk. We're going to bring it back. And doesn't this, this has to be approved by March? March isn't March fifteenth. Yes, and the the notice that was published in the journal was a combined notice for both um, in one hearing. We maybe could separate it out, but my recommendation would be that when we're That's that fine. close, we probably need to vote on it together. But is the direction for next year to have two separate hearings related to operating and for capital improvement? The notice is actually generated by the state, which includes all of our budget. So there wouldn't be a way to separate the notice out, but I can okay. work with you. We, uh, we can look into it more next year, but for purposes of today, I think it's a, a safer option uh, to vote together. And Sarah, will you just refresh my memory? I didn't mean to cut you off, did I cut you off? Can you refresh my memory? As far as, just so I have my numbers correct, we're proposing roughly $15, 11 of which were at the hands of the backfill correct. legislation, right? Correct. So this council just proposed a $4 increase. Correct. I just I, wanted to make sure. I just wanted to add, if it, before we take the vote, if um, council members Shaner or O'Kane have any comments. That would be the opportunity to do that. Well, yeah. What I'd like to add about the $11 increase that's coming forced upon us because of the state and anyone who is not familiar, which is most people are not familiar with the money that the city receives in that backfill, um, I would just ask that you, a simple Google for a backfill of taxes for the state of Iowa will get you the information that you need to help you to understand that the state was giving us that money back to help us keep our taxes low. And now they're going to phase that out over the next, depending on the size of the city, are we in a four year phase out? Correct. Two city is. So just so we know, it happened to us, this is our first year of phase out. We have three more years and each year that number is going to get higher. Yes. The money that they're not going to, I, I call it refund back to us. I don't know what the correct term is, but the backfill. Well, let me tell you, they, I was here. Right. They, they came to all the cities, and the League of Cities finally gave in. Bob, we were part of that, because we had assurances that the backfill would not go away. We agreed to allow the apartment houses at 800000 to be phased out. We agreed to that, but we never agreed to the industrial and commercial properties. And I, I've said this because I had the meeting. I was one of the mayors. With the mayor, with the governor Brandstad, he said, "I'll veto that bill if they, we made a deal with you cities and we'll honor the deal." Well, this governor and this legislature, they weren't, weren't party to the deal, so they they're not honoring. It's a joke. It's an absolute farce. And there's more to look forward to because they're going right. to phase it out over the next three more years, and we can't experience enough a growth to make up for that tax loss. I don't know but, how but we can. But those same legislators will be at the forums at Wit some Saturday morning telling them how you guys or the public library yeah. that, that we, they can't control local or government museum they're out of control right. and while the state they sits on a record the surplus that's okay so again very 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 tough decisions um, but part of it really was not our decision to make I do want to state that I appreciated um, everybody's assistance making it through the budget. Um, it was a daunting task, but I think that we had a lot of good dialogue. Um, one thing that I wanna point out, just today, um, as part of the agenda, we talked about um, the, the JAG grant. 
Um, that is two officers, salary and or benefits um, for two officers. We have lots of grants available and the city is very good at seeking out and utilizing those grants. Um, I think it's important to highlight that because I think a lot of people have the tendency to think that it's, it's just their tax dollars that are going towards things the city prioritizes, um, but we do utilize our resources well and I don't know a department head that is not invested in looking for grants that, that can help us out. And this is a good example of a grant that has a huge impact on our area specifically. So hopefully we'll have even more of those opportunities in the future. Um, and, uh, and I appreciate, I appreciate that we've, we've had such good dialogue around it. Okay, before I call the roll, I just wanna make sure I have this. Um, I have uh, Councilman Moore motioning for the item as it is on the agenda, correct? Correct. Um, seconded by Waters, correct? Correct. Scott? No. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Shainer? Aye. 26, a resolution approving a statement of authorized personnel compliment for the departments within the city. I'll move that. Second. Five zero. Citizen concerns. Are there any citizens to be heard? Council concerns. Go ahead, Matthew. Um, so I attended Dueling Piano, the Sam Rock the House. It was put on by Lila Mays. Um, and it was it was fantastic. They they packed the house. It was my first time going to a Dueling Pianos event, and it was uh, it was it was a lot of fun. They got you up and out of your seat. Um, I am often asked how you can contribute to organizations like Lila May um, or the Siouxland Coalition Against Human Trafficking. Um, they do have a meeting coming up tomorrow um, and they, they have a website. Both organizations have their own website um, and they are always looking for people um, that either wanna donate, be it time or money. Um, again, as we fluctuate between the, the bitter cold weather, um, of this winter we're leaving behind and the nice spring weather. I wanna remind people that we've got fresh painted murals downtown in the Skywalk. Um, and we've got nice days ahead of us, so spend some time grilling out and uh, spend some time enjoying some of our mini green spaces because there's plenty out there. And that's everything I've got. Today, I don't have a lot. I just, again, I would really like anyone who you know, has concerns about the increase in our levy to please go in Google rollback, taxes rollback for the state of Iowa to better understand what we're up against. Um, great weekend for around the city, lots of visitors, teams in town for the Heartland, I can't remember what that was called. State tournament. State tournament. Seventh grade boys from Healing came oh, in first place. But. Awesome, so great, did a lot of good for the city, lots of people out and about, everybody was busy and that's what everybody likes to see, so love to welcome new people in town. Enjoy our expo center, our restaurants, facilities, everything that we have. We have more things coming in. NAIA starting up this week, and we have a fast pitch softball tournament coming up at the expo center, so lots happening. That's for sure. Um, I would just echo it was a great weekend. I was able to go around to the Heartland Showcase and see some of those basketball game, so it was fun to be able to witness some of that and the utilization of our facilities all across town. I would also um, just mention a shout out to Morningside University's dance team. Uh, they were actually, they secured the, um, the national championship trophy, first time in program history, and they actually scored the highest score that's ever been recorded in the competition. So it was pretty exciting for them to be able to bring home that trophy and that national championship. 
I would also um, just remind folks that NAIA is coming this week. We're excited about those first games happening on Thursday. Um, so we'll be looking forward to that um, and welcoming all those people. In, in the light of that, I would also ask that people remember to, uh, as spring comes around, we get a lot of uh, litter and debris that is suddenly visible because all the snow has melted away. We want to make sure that we um, showcase our community in a way that should be showcased and remind people to do their part. If they can just pick up around their business or maybe out in front of their home um, and clean up those city streets, where certainly our city staff is doing the best they can, um, but it does take, a, does take a village. So we would ask and remind people if they can just clean up their little corner of the world that we can go on and really um, showcase our community in a great way for the people coming in for the NAI tournament. So make sure to catch that action down at the Tyson Event Center. Um, I would also remind people that this Thursday there will be a downtown parade. I know there are members of this council that really enjoy parades, so hopefully everyone's able to participate um, and have a good time. No, I don't think so. So, um, but hopefully you'll be down enjoying it and taking it in, um, but it will be on Thursday. Thursday at 6 p.m., I believe, going through 4th Street. To get your box candy, you can eat while you watch the parade. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> anyway, you lots of exciting stuff, so that's all I have, Mayor. Nothing further here, Mayor. I move we adjourn. Second. Scott. Aye. Waters. Aye. Moore. Oh, hey, I wanted you to. Moore. Aye. O'Kane. Aye. Shaner. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so you'll get that over there.